You're listening to the MPI Paranormal Podcast, where the truth is to be found. A podcast exploring all things paranormal, hauntings, UFOs, crypto, the unknown. Our members believe in the skeptical approach, but with an open mind, just trying to make sense of it all. And I do. I take my personal beliefs into it, but like you said, then I have my skeptical side that right. wants to prove it another way. I don't really have a say on it right now because I don't what, know what the video looks like. Well, I'm looking for the evidence. Right. What's the evidence? A story to me is not really evidence because that's one person's experience. Military Paranormal Investigations is not affiliated to any branch of the military. It's time. It's, time. it's time! Coming to you from North Texas on multiple platforms for maximum reach. Here are your hosts, members of the MPI team. Hello and welcome to Military Paranormal Investigations Radio. My name is Mike. I'm Rob. I'm Jeff. I'm Allison. Welcome to today's show. First off, start with a little business that we are not affiliated to any branch of the military. And you can always find us on our website and social media, www.militaryparanormal.com. Find us on Facebook, Twitter account as well, and our YouTube channel. And Podbean you can find us on Podbean yeah, too. And Podbean, yeah, actually any of the major uh, podcast players out there, you right. can catch us on. Pretty much, you can go to any search bar now and just type in "military paranormal," and we're one of the first ones to pop up. What have you guys been up to? Not a whole lot for me. Just work. Same with me. I'm just working a lot now, and mostly nights. So very Almost rarely like we see me. Welcoming a guest. Yeah, almost. Yeah, yeah. I guess you could say I'm a guest right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's good to have you back in house with us. It's always fun to get back out and do this. We had a new year. I don't know how you guys, how, how about you, Allison? Have you, it's our last show. Have you had a awfully quiet over there? I'm awfully quiet. No, it's been good. I didn't make any resolutions or is that what they're called? Yeah. New yeah. year's resolutions. Yeah, yeah. I didn't make any of those. I don't do that. I don't want to be a failure. So I just didn't set any. Yeah. But I hate black eyed peas. You didn't eat the black eyed peas? I know I did. Okay, you yes. got to have that. that oh, yes. That's a tradition. You got to have the black eyed peas. Well, and some, cornbread. Yeah, and some ham hawk in there. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. We, yes. we, yeah. We talked about that on our Christmas episode, and we ended up, I did make some black eyed peas, but I forgot to put the daggum dime in the pot. You're looking at me like I'm crazy. Yeah, you obviously never heard of the dime either. I've heard of the dime story that you said in the shower, so that's where I'm going to with the dime. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, when, like, so you're throwing the dime in the pot now to cook with? You, you, whoever gets the dime when you have the black eyed peas has good luck. But my son was about to go out on a deployment, so we were. That was our the last day with him. So that's still weird to hear that. We get, I know it's crazy. Isn't it? <laughs> Well, hey, before we get started on the show, I'd like to uh, give a shout out to a group that we've been in talk with out in Colorado. They're the Hanover Paranormal Research Society. Thanks for uh, reaching out to us. Yeah, go. They just they've kind of recently gotten going. I think was what I saw on their yeah. on their Facebook page. Go give them a shout. And Are they a brand new group that started out? I, I I think that's what. Yeah, they're relatively new. Speaking uh, with the man who formed the group. He's a prior military member. Oh, awesome. Spent, spent 12 years in uh, the Air Force, and they formed a group. So just got, wanted to give a shout-out to him. You got some videos and all. You have to go check them out. Was he ever stationed down here or anything like no, that? He no, he didn't say. Oh, okay. He didn't say where. So what is the topic of our show tonight? Dolls. Scaries. Dolls? Creepy. Dolls, yeah. Haunted yeah. dolls. dolls. Yes. Really? Yeah. Dolls. Dolls. It was your idea. Don't look at me like that. <laughs> <laughs> You look back in through television, even, and you have the whole Conjuring series. You have Saw. You know that that whole. I think they had like thirty-two yeah, episodes. The, there the Saw now. dolls, and then yeah. you got all the Chucky ones, and yeah, Robert the doll, which we'll talk about later. Yeah, there, there's a whole bunch of dolls out there that are yeah. creepy and everything. You know, I got to thinking about this. I'm I'm wondering, you know, just like people have a phobia for clowns, mm-hmm. you know, they have a phobia for dolls. Just, I just wonder if it's just something about the dolls that make people think there's some kind of attachment or or that they're haunted or something like that. Well, I know we were talking before the show, and we'll, we'll get into this when we talk about the different ones. But like I was saying, I, I'm fine with a Raggedy Ann doll. I, yeah. I don't have anything to do with a Raggedy yeah. Ann doll, but Annabelle was that way. But you get a glass porcelain doll in there, and those things just look yeah. creepy to me. I, mm. I, yeah. I think, yeah, it's probably yeah. the, the more human features. You know, yeah. when you have a... 
Raggedy Ann doll. It's kind of toyish. Yeah, exactly. And then you get the ones that are porcelain and their eyes open and yeah, and follow no. you. Yeah, you have the is. ones that look like your eyes are moving with you and yeah, everything. No, yeah. I'm, I'm done. Nope, that's yeah. it. I'm, and, and you nope. know, usually when you see those old old dolls like that, they're sometimes they're kind of worn and tattered, and the way that the way the patina on them is, it almost make, gives them a creepy, like a you know, if you were putting makeup on an actor, that's what the the age does to the dolls. It gives it that kind of extra key, creepy factor as well. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, who's going to be our first speaker tonight? Well, unfortunately, I lost the vote. <laughs> so I get to go first. All right. I have La Isla de las Muñecas. Is that in English? Yes. The yeah. island of the dolls. <laughs> oh, you're doing the whole island. The whole island. Okay. And, okay. and it was, uh, that's why I wanted to go last. But anyway, I got voted out. But no, it, it's, um, if you've seen any of the other paranormal shows, they a lot of them have visited there and they've done sort of that. But I wanted to kind of give a little more of the backstory of what's going on and kind of get everybody's thoughts and opinions as to what they think might be going on there. Um, the Island of the Dolls is a it's in a little town just south of Mexico City called Xochimilco, and it's an area of canals and uh, these islands called if I can say this right. Chinampas. And, and what this was, was back during the Aztec era, it was a way of agricultural farming. They had all these little islands, and, and they basically been called floating islands, and it allowed the crops to grow and have plenty of irrigation, and it gave them more mass to grow these things. So it's kind of just like a an area, if you think of Venice, but it's all like little islands. So just a bunch of little islands all around. Now, the Chinampas have a haunted history. Back during the Mexican Revolution, we went in and they the they just kind of massacred everybody and they they took they killed all these soldiers and they dumped all the bodies in the canals. Later on, when they were dredging the canals, they supposedly pulled up just hundreds, if not thousands, of skeletons out of these canals. Um, you know, back from when they had dumped all the bodies in there. A lot of people also believe that there's mermaids that are in the canals. That's the big story that the locals. The locals say they say that, and, and well, as we get into it a little more, um, the main guy in the story kept hearing a, a woman trying to beckon for him or call mm -hmm. for him. So a lot of people believe that there's mermaids that are in the canals. You must be on a different island of the dolls than I am because I've never heard any of these stories. I haven't either. I, I'm used to uh, the the island of the dolls being um, a. a shrine to a little girl that drowned yeah, there. that's what I thought, too. We're getting there. Oh, you, okay. <laughs> I'm like, oh, patience, yeah. patience. I know, that's the way I was like. Uh, uh, well, uh, I couldn't yeah. answer to him because I was like, I, I've never heard any of these. Okay, go ahead. I'm, I'm, <laughs> history. Yep. Well, see, it, it's all relative, though, because when you, when you, and you'll see when we get to the end that some of the stories uh, that come around it is kind of, Helps to know the history of kind of what, what mm -hmm. happened there. So this was all still around, you were saying the Aztecs and stuff? Or, or Right, well, this is just kind of the history. I mean, it, the, the the canals and that, mm -hmm. all, all that was done for agricultural agricultural reasons for the Aztecs. Okay. And who were the Chupas or? The Chinampas, Chinampas. are the areas of canals with the little islands in them. That's, okay. That's the name that they're called. Gotcha. I'm with you now. Now, one of the islands is called Isla de la Muñecas, which mm -hmm. is the island of the dolls. During its historical, most famous time period, there were over 1,500 dolls placed there over the course of about 50 years. Starting about when? Um, the, the guy's name is called Don Julian Santana Barrera, mm -hmm. and right. he died in 2001. They say about 15 Right, he was years, the caretaker so of the island. It's about, about, that. about the mid-1900s. Mid and so there's two stories about him. One is that he abandoned his wife and kids and then went to the island to become a hermit and just kind of live out his time there in isolation. And then the other one was that his girlfriend cheated on him and that he moved there to kind of get away after this happened. But now here's where the story goes that, that you are probably most familiar with. And there's, there's a couple versions of the story that 
it was one to three girls that were swimming. But the important part is, is there was one girl that drowned, mm-hmm. and he tried to save her. He pulled her out. Right, and that's to save the her. one that he found. Right, and and he couldn't save her. Um, it was uh, it says a little time passed by. I read stories. It was actually I was assuming that it was like, you know, he pulled the little girl out, and then he turned around and saw a little doll oh, floating. But, uh, most of the stories that I read were is that it was like a couple of weeks later okay. that he found the doll floating by. And he assumed that it was hers. So the uh, traditional story is that he hung it up to honor her. Mm-hmm. And um, way of showing respect and, and uh, support the spirit of the girl. Right, right. Now, so if you go with that and the story that's being told now is – as time went on, he would see more spirits. He would see this little girl spirit, and he believed that it wasn't working, so he would kept collecting dolls to uh, to appease her spirit, and yeah. he kept putting more and more dolls there. So he's the one that was putting all the dolls, not a bunch of other people. Well, correct. As now, as that it's a tourist attraction, of course, there's dolls that are added because people. There's like one of the one of the dolls is a toy, like one of the little Toy Story with the doll head on the little Lego. Oh, okay. Legs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's one of those there, and I'm sure he didn't do that because that just wasn't a thing, right? Back then, so. Um, so yeah, the story say that after he believed he saw her spirit and that he uh, he put up the doll to, and, but he kept seeing her, so he kept adding more and more dolls to try to honor her or to appease her spirit. Yeah. Um, he would go on to accept dolls and doll parts. So not everything there is a doll. There may be a head hanging there. There may be a doll body hanging there. Um, and, but he would do this and he it got to the point to where he was except people would bring him and then they would, he would give them fruits or vegetables that he grew and then they would bring him a doll. So that's how he got so many of them. He would find dolls in the trash he would put them there. He would find doll parts laying around. He would put them there. Yeah. And uh, this whole time, he kept telling his family, his friends, anybody, that he kept hearing a woman's voice calling for him to come out into the water. But he kept telling them he didn't want to go, but the voice kept calling him to go out there. A woman's voice or little girl's? Woman's. Okay. Or women's voice. Or voice says. Now, I don't know at this point in the story, I don't know if any of you guys have actually looked Again, Ghost Adventures is probably the most popular group that's one out there that's been on TV and everything. And uh, you can go watch that. Uh, I caution that in my personal opinion. But anyway, the um, they kind of give you the history in a brief summary that same, that seems to be correct. But the dolls that are on the island are, I mean, some of these things are really creepy. There's like there was a video that I was watching that showed these two dolls, and they had like a it looked like Freddy Krueger when he was burnt, you know, kind of like the skin with the holes and the, mm-hmm. and the whole uh, melted part. I mean, they look kind of like that, and it's probably because they've been aged for so long out in the sun. Um, the dolls are all, like, like I was saying at the beginning of the show, they're just the, the patina on them, the, the dirt, the mold. Some of them are just absolutely creepy, and they're hanging, like some of them are hanging by their neck, just hanging from a tree. Some of them are, you know, st- nailed to a tree there then the, on the inside of the uh, museum that's on the island which is the shed that he actually lived in there's a shrine and he has if you watch any of the videos the original doll is inside that shed the one that he found the one that he found and then there's four other ones there's five dolls total that he believes were probably the most active or the ones that talked to him the most mm-hmm. so they were in there and that was part of the reason he had the shrine up around those now, when did he start doing this? Because I know he was collecting dolls for about fifty years. You know, and I was looking over my notes here, but yeah, it was. It I had read, I'd read some stories. I thought I saw in the late forties okay. was when this actually started. Like I said, he died in two thousand one. Yeah, two thousand one. And most of the things say fifty years that he had it, but I believe I saw in the late forties. But he was just like, a young guy when right. he when he saw her. Right. Now here is where. I'm going to backtrack in a minute, but here's where it kind of gets a little weird. So his nephew, his name was Anastasio. He found him supposedly having drowned in the exact spot spot. that this little girl was, uh, was found in. Now remember that because the, um, I find that a little, I guess, concerning, uh, later on, we'll kind of learn that they, there's actually no record 
of this little girl having drowned. And during this time frame, there was, this was a pretty populous area. This is right out, you know, the outskirts of Mexico city. Um, this wasn't something that, you know, was just now, now the Island is like a two hour boat ride from the docks there in Xochimilco. It takes a while cause they're on little canoes. Like they have to kind of row over to them. It takes like two hours to get there. Um, and, but so, there's no records of the girl actually having drowned. So how did they find this island? And if it's like two hours out of the way, and well, because again, he moved there to become a recluse, and people, other people, the other islands have, you know, not necessarily maybe the island right beside you, but because they're just little small things. Yeah, they're they're small. They're not big at all to do really anything on. But, you know, I would say this island, from what I can see in the pictures, is probably no bigger than a, a typical yard and house that you may have you know, here in the States, as far as what we would live on, just a regular lot with a house is about how big and the little shed is like a room. Mm, he's going there every day or no, he'd live there on this Island. Uh huh. And he grew some crops there. And then that's what he would trade with people for the dolls or for other things that he needed. And that was, he would also give away his own personal possessions when they would give him dolls as well. He, um, but Again, there was no records there. His nephew, though, Anastasio, he believes that the mermaids are the ones that lured him there and then and lured him into the water into his death. That's, he believes that's what it actually was. So like the old pirate's tales where the mermaids were there to bring them closer to the rocks. Right. But he believes... Yeah, that, that's and that's what most of the locals believe that it was the mermaids as well. So, so are people able to like today go out and see this? Is it secured or do you know? It's um, I watched a couple of videos around 2016. I guess it might have closed for a little while because they were maybe doing some illegal stuff. But I don't know how much truth there was to that. But yes, there's a website that's up. I don't believe it's an official website. Mm. I say that because when you watch the videos, there's um. There's a guy that's about as creepy as the dolls that narrate some of these things, and uh, he's talking about how beautiful these dolls. And it's really, it's really kind of creepy. But anyway, I just don't feel like that would be put up on a government sponsored. Yeah, I don't think it's government sponsored, but I'm on a website that's islanddelamoscas dot yeah. com. Yeah, I'm on and, it too, uh, and that's the one where I'm reading a lot of stuff where it shows that it is a tourist attraction. Yeah. But after he died. Yes. And well, now they're bringing more and more dolls all the time, which is probably why on some of the paranormal shows that we've seen, we got some like Zach or Yeah, the whatever. crying dolls. Yeah, and the that. crying dolls and stuff like that going on there. But is yeah. it now just a tourist attraction or is it an now, acted haunted island? Now it's a it's a tourist attraction and it's ran by Anastasio. He He's his family and he run it um, as a tourist attraction. That's how they make their money. Um, and even before he died, people had gotten word had gotten out and people came there to see it and he would show them and tell them the stories and that sort of stuff. Now, uh, a lot of the stories with the dolls have said that they're able to move their heads, their arms and eyes. They're stated to be, uh, laughing or whispering to each other. And there's a couple of videos that I did find on YouTube that has some whispering sounds, but there, I don't know how much truth there is to that. I, you can't, I can't verify that they were captured there and most of the locals though believe that the dolls and or the island is possessed um they think that don julian was possessed by a spirit that caused them to collect the dolls okay so they say women's voices are heard and that but uh, and the locals believe that it's possibly the mermaids now here we're going to take a little quick side turn i'm almost done with my part but the uh, another story though is of the legend of La Llorona. If you uh, and this kind of relates to the dolls because again he thinks that it's the girl drowns and he hears the spirit of the crying women. So La Llorona, do y'all know what La Llorona is? Nope. Yeah. It's also called the crying woman, and uh, I guess the story is like a nineteen or fifteen twenty one, a Mexican slave girl named La Malinche. She had twins with the famous uh, conquistador Cortez. Well, after Cortez met somebody else and ran off with her, um, she was all sad, but she was told by the gods that if he came back and took his children, that those kids would come back and ultimately destroy the Mexican people. 
So her, to save her own people, she went, took her kids out and killed them and uh, threw them into the chinampas in the canals. Now it says that you can hear her going through the islands, like you can hear her feet shuffling and you can hear her wailing and screaming uncontrollably trying to find her kids. So a lot of the locals also believe that the Island of the Dolls is related to that story, which there are many cultures that have a very similar story to La La Roma. But a lot of people think that that's, that Don Julian was, that's what he heard versus the little girl was her crying. And then there was some news reports. There was a, the daily mail newspaper done a, a, um, a report on it that it was that women, that people frequently heard women screaming in footsteps through that area of the islands as well. Mm. Most of the debunkers again say that there's no records to support the drowning girl. And then ABC did another story where their official statement was, is they believe that Don Julian believed the dolls were possessed and he collected them to kind of appease and protect himself. And then, uh, so now, the more modern version is the locals don't know if it's more of a, if they're, if the island is haunted or now it's just extra creepy factor because of all the attention that they've got. Yeah. And then so this is where I'll leave it with you guys. The leading, the skeptical theory of everything is that in an attempt to isolate himself, he went to this island, stayed there by himself, and into ultimately drove himself crazy because of the sheer isolation. Sure. And started hearing the voices and hearing that sort of stuff. All right. It's definitely unique. There's what I found interesting is you've got mermaids, La Llorona, haunted dolls. You've got hauntings from the soldiers that were massacred and thrown into the canals. Yeah. There's all these different stories. So I was going to ask you guys if you thought you think the more skeptical approach, you know, that he just drove himself crazy because he was alone out there out in the middle of nowhere. My personal thought is, is maybe the original story, maybe he did find a girl drown. Maybe he had a paranormal experience that was legitimate and then it just escalated out of control from there. Cause you know, if you look at some of the photos of him and you, listen to some of the reports of him. I mean, I think he was really crazy in the end days. I mean, 1500 dolls. And if you look at the way they're hung, I mean, that's just not natural. I mean, if you, if you have to Google this and look at the pictures of it and if you, you live in that and you, every time you turn around, there's these dolls hanging out of trees and stuck to your walls. And there's something really messed up about that. <laughs> well, for me, my thought is, is, you know, going back to what you were talking about, the, the, Sheer isolation. I think over time, if you're there by yourself, I think you could start thinking and that you're seeing things and hearing things and all of that. So for me like, personally, I would go towards the, it was just a an issue with him. Like Tom Hanks and Wilson. Right. Well, he said there was no records of a girl drowning. Let's just say he's not the one that possibly killed a girl and in guilt. Yeah. True. You know, it's funny you say that because all the stories, after I was reading everything, I mean, and I, I looked on this for a while, and I, I always had that thought in the back of my head. And I never saw it. There was never. Yeah, there's nothing there's on there. Yeah. Nothing about ever. it. But he stayed there for, you said this is where he lived, and he constantly put dolls, more dolls out there. And apparently he died in the same spot that she did, maybe. Well, see, I find that weird because if there's no record and. And I'm sure he might have showed well, his nephew. Always legend. Legend leads yeah. from something. I just find it too convenient that he died in the supposed same spot. I, I don't know. I, uh, Unless he killed himself there. Because he killed because her. And that's, exactly. Yeah. And it could have been on an anniversary that he did it, and out of guilt, he probably was going crazy being out there for so long. I, I just, yeah. I, uh, I, you know, like I said, I never saw any, there was no other stories that hinted around that he was responsible, but I don't know why right. I just had that in the back of my head the whole time. Just the skeptic in me. I think that the isolation, maybe there was yeah. a, a paranormal event mm. and it just set it off and then, and agree. I, I think that he's out there and he's talking to himself and maybe the dolls kept him company and he, you know, 
maybe in his own mind, maybe he had, you know, hey, Billy, how you doing today? And then he goes to the next one. Hey, right. you know, Susie. Right. Then, you know, yeah, could be. Yeah. I know. I'd go insane living on an island with all those dolls. One that small in particular. Yeah. 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 What do you think, Allison? I think it was very educational. For me, I don't do scary movies. I don't watch anything like that because it gives me nightmares. So I have seen it on Ghost Adventures, but you took it from the beginning, so it was very nice to hear that and to learn about it. But having all those dolls would be very, very creepy. Yeah. You need to... If you haven't looked, if you're listening and you haven't ever looked, Google Island of the Dolls and just peruse through the images. Well, like I said, the the page that I'm on doesn't look creepy at all. Yeah. It, they're not creepy at all. I mean, the very first one is like a memorial to this girl at the, the front page, and then you can see the flowers and everything. They're, it doesn't look... It does not look like the videos that I've seen on some of the paranormal shows. Yeah. Some of the paranormal shows, it looks like it's completely haunted. There's just dolls lying everywhere. all over the place, yes. everywhere. It, well, it's a creepy place, but I'm looking at the website. It doesn't look creepy at all to me. You know, and, and I said that in the beginning. I'm a little skeptical of that investigation that occurred because, again, like you said, if you go there in the daylight and it's lit up in the sunshine, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. it's not going to, you know, and at night it will have a creepier factor. I get it. And, uh, but but yeah, I do think if you look at some of the um, individual dolls, now you take them individually. Yeah, I'm, not me. Nope. The um, there are some that are just. I was trying to pull up this image right here. Like there's one that's a, uh, and this is probably a more current one. There's one that's got, it's like. I'm looking at it here. It's like it's burnt. The eyes are cut out. It looks like it's got human hair, and then it's got a doll. It's like it's got a bullet hole in its head, and then a doll inside its mouth. I mean, hopefully, certainly, he didn't do that. Hopefully, that was something that was done currently. But I look at some of these that were obviously done way back when that have been out on the island because they're so deteriorating. Mm-hmm. That, that's and what gets me. Mm. This picture I'm looking at here has one, two, three, four, five five doll heads nailed to a tree another doll that's kind of standard just a regular old baby doll that's it's not that scary and then there's one off to the side that its hair's all rotted like decaying and it's anyway it's um if you lived near that every day i just think that mess with your head in itself Uh, well i guess for me is you know i think rob said it earlier i i haven't seen any real footage of anything, you know, where, right. where a doll's moved or, you know, it's all just hearsay. People, exactly. people well, talking and, and the most, the biggest thing they got out of the ghost adventure shows was a doll laughing and I wasn't there. I don't have all the facts, but in, on the surface to me as a paranormal investigator, it doesn't fit the laugh when they're showing the wall where the doll's laughing, there's some old, it, just old dolls and heads, and then they're talking about a wall with all the dolls on it. Well, so not the shrine area, but the, no, no, no. I'm, I'm looking at one that has a bunch of dolls and it's got Barbie dolls on there. Right, so it, that's the wall they're talking about. I don't, I don't know because I haven't seen the yeah. episode. It's a, uh, it's just got a doll with like four or five dolls on it, and they're old, like old timey dolls. And then it's got this <laughs> laugh that comes from it, and it's just. And it scares them, and I granted that would scare me too if I were investigating in the pitch black quiet, and then the doll comes out of laughing. But it just almost appears staged to me well, at, from the show. Well, I didn't see the show either, but I guess since you did, the question I have for you: Did the doll's mouth move, or was it just a child's laugh? Or no, there was you could not. What I what I remember on the show, and Allison, if you I don't know, I watched another clip of the day to refresh my memory of it, but it um the doll does the laugh doesn't fit anything that's occurring on the wall. They're not like showing a baby doll that supposedly is laughing. It's these dolls are just kind of hanging there, and there's a laugh. Right. To me, it's almost like the laugh is coming from a doll that's on the other side of the wall. Well, or could it be? Could it be a spirit of of the? It, it's obviously a doll laughing. Okay. It's yeah. It 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 doesn't fit. That's where but I'm going. There's also toys that have dolls that laugh. Yeah, and, and see, that's what I was thinking. Right, and that's what it that's what it sounds like. And it doesn't fit the dolls that are on the wall. 
And maybe it's another doll somewhere else, but the way they're portraying it is it's loud and it's coming right here from these dolls. And now, if, go ahead. And maybe it's making a, new, a newer doll laugh, and they just don't the way they don't show it in the in the version. The, well, the question I have for you guys that watched the show: Did uh, the folks that came out did they bring a doll out and actually they brought put something um, there? Was it? I want to say it was Charles the doll or. Okay. They bought supposedly the world's most haunted. It wasn't Robert the doll, but it was supposedly the world's most haunted doll. They brought it to the island to see what it would do, and it. Huh. What you got there? I, I'm Robert. bringing it up. I, I got it. It's that that episode. I think was a season finale or something. It's like two hours long. It, you know, it it's forever long. Well, so this one's a minute and twenty seven seconds. So. Ready? No, I'm not ready for this. Oh. Whoa! Bro! Come here! Oh my god. Oh my god. One of them's laughing. Oh my god. Oh my god, bro! Holy This. What the f Bro, I backed up. I backed up. And all of a sudden I hear you started. I thought it was a cat fight. I thought a cat started I did too. fighting. And then when you ran back, I was listening, it just giggles, and I was like, who's trying as a horror oh, what the Who's out of a horror movie? Oh, that was scary. Oh my oh. god. Because he hit one of the dolls. Well, that's, but that's what I was wondering. Was there a doll up on the wall that yeah. had some kind of... Uh, what he's showing, it doesn't look like... It, it, like I said, it just doesn't fit to me. Yeah, and, and he's I, jumping from a spider. I would have jumped too. I don't do spiders. I don't know. And like I said, for me, I don't want to you know, say one way or the other. It could... It, could have been something they truly experienced. Right, and yes, and you that's know, very I true. Don't, I don't know. I mean, we, yeah, he jumped up and down in this shack, which could have made a, a, right, a motion. A movement, movement yeah. And that's mm -hmm. what the dolls yeah. react to, is yeah. a, a vibration or some yeah. a movement. There's no control over that environment to verify that that was a haunted doll. That's my opinion. Yeah, see, I'd be curious to know, did they find what doll it was coming from? Yes, and also with it being out there in the element. Exactly, yeah. How long will that laughing doll last? And that was part of the thing. There's like no batteries. There's no battery. Nothing's been. Yeah. So. I don't know. Anyways. All right. That's my opinion. So uh, that was some interesting. I, You know, I only knew a little bit about the island of the yeah, dolls. And I, yeah. I'd seen short clips of that, but I never really. Knew, like Allison said, the history behind the Island of the Dolls. That's a pretty interesting uh, well, legend. Yeah, I, I would like to go there and actually do a really controlled environment. Well, didn't... Investigation? I, I'm thinking Josh Gates went there as well. Yes. Yeah, he did. He did, yeah. He did. And I don't think he had anything, because yeah, I think that's I the one that I watched was the one with Josh Gates. Yeah, I don't remember, but I do know he was there. Yeah, and I yeah. remember looking creepy and everything, yeah. but I don't think they had anything happen. Yeah. I have to go back and look because that's I do like Josh. I think that that's yeah. Uh, well, already that's all I had on Isla de la Muñecas. If you guys want to press on, I think Robert was up next. Yeah, mine's nowhere as long as yours, so I'm, I'm good with that one. I picked a small one. Y'all know me; I can <laughs> run my mouth for days. No, really? Yeah, I promise. Okay. <laughs> Mine is based on Charlie the Haunted Doll, and that's with an L-E-Y, not an L-I-E. Because I get that mixed up. You have two different Charlies. you got Charlie the Haunted Doll, and then you have Charlie the Haunted Comedian Doll that you see a lot on TV. And I'm not talking about the comedian one that is the puppeteer. I'm talking about an actual doll that they found that tormented this family back in the early 60s. Um, the, the story behind it was up in Massachusetts. And I can't remember exactly what town it was. I, th I want to say it's like Beverly, Massachusetts or something like that. But there's this doll that was uh, added to a collection of antique dolls. And 
it came from a family that claimed to be tormented. Uh, they had like five kids and they collected a bunch of dolls and this one particular doll would interact with the children. And the parents thought that the children were actually doing all this mischief until the children weren't there and then the same thing started happening. So the parents started looking more about this and um, they found the doll in the attic of the home that they moved into. And inside this chest uh, is where they found it. Uh, they had newspaper clippings and everything from the early 30s, but it really didn't start tormenting them until like six, the late 60s, I believe it was. Like I said, they were blaming their five children on everything that was going on because they said they didn't see the doll moving, nothing like that. And they put it bunch with a bunch of other antique dolls, and then things started happening. They started witnessing Charlie um, moving stuff. Uh, they saw that the children were becoming fixated with the doll. And then all the children at night refused to go to the bathroom at night because Charlie would do stuff to them. So it was a, I don't know if it was a way that the parents were getting the children potty trained or whatever because it doesn't say how old these children were when it was doing it. It'd be pretty messed up. Yeah, yeah. I know that it, <laughs> they say now if you get out of bed, Charlie's gonna get you. So I don't know if that what it, what it was, but then there's stories about there how the parents started believing the children, and they said the truth was never fully discovered about this doll what was going on, the origins of or anything like that, and they actually just wanted to get rid of the thing. So they took the doll and locked them back in the trunk that they found them in, and that's when things started calming down. Then when they finally moved out, they wanted to get rid of the doll. It says years later the children were all grown, the house was sold, and then they removed the trunk from the attic at a garage sale, and then the doll remained one of the last things to finally go. A woman bought the doll to add her to her antique doll collection, the homeowner recounted his own stories and started talking about Charlie when he was growing up. That just fed into the story. They say now Charlie is just a haunted doll that resides in the shop that that one lady bought with all her other antique dolls. He's a really creepy doll. He just sits in the corner with a bunch of taxidermy stuff, just sitting there. When I was looking at this, wasn't the one of the youngest child, didn't he have scratches on it? Yeah, and yeah. And they that, thought that, it was a cat or something, mm -hmm. but they found out it wasn't a cat? Yeah, they said none of them wanted to go five feet within the bench of where the doll resided on. And then they said the final straw was when the youngest right. was covered with the scratches. Yeah. The youngest one insisted that Charlie had been the one scratching. And that's yeah. when they said, no, we're done. Lock that sucker back up in the attic. Well, you know, it's interesting you talk about that here at the end of the show. We're going to talk about the one that I had, Robert the doll. It was the same kind same, of thing, yes. you know. The parents would hear noise. Mm -hmm. They were blaming it on the doll. So it's kind of neat to hear another story with a doll that was doing the same kind of thing with yeah. the children. I was just looking at a couple of pictures of him sitting there with the coyote and the turkey. I know, he's a weird-looking doll. Yeah, that is pretty creepy-looking. So this new lady that has him now, has she had any activity? She hasn't said she's had any activity, but she said that she's more than willing to tell you some of the stories about the doll. So I'm assuming that there is other stories out there if she's willing to tell you her stuff that she's witnessed, but she's not given it out there. I haven't found any other research about it. I wanted to do Robert the doll, but he said, and then <laughs> Chucky, I was like, Ooh, I'll, I'll do it on Chucky, but Chucky's based on Robert the doll. So that then I, correct. so yeah. then I found Charlie the doll, Yeah, but I didn't want to do the Charlie, the comedian, because that's, that's all hocus pocus show that's business. That's the one that was like a traditional. Yeah. That's, yeah. Was, yeah, right. the, 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 yeah. I didn't want to do it on that one. So I wanted to do it on this one, but I really couldn't find anything about Charlie except this one thing about how he was found in the sixties. And then he started tormenting the family, scaring the kids. The kids were blaming it on everything that they were doing. They were blaming it on Charlie saying they weren't the ones doing it. So I, is it a haunted story or is yeah. it just hearsay through the kids? It was reading on down in the story, and it's interesting to know that where the doll's located at now is just a few minutes away from Salem, Massachusetts. Made me think, uh, is there it's... any any story to the whole Salem witch thing? And well, or, you, you know, uh, you know, yeah. I'll, I'll say this: I, I'm pretty sure that Salem was just where the trials were held. That's not really where. Well, why were they held there? Right, exactly. That's the courthouse. Well, of what? That's where they held 
So that's what he was saying, how how everything is around this area yeah, right, exactly. in Massachusetts. I, guess, yeah. I, I, I see where you're going. Yeah. It's not so, so much Salem, could, but everything is around here. Is there some... Could there be a tie to exactly. it? Exactly. To well, the doll. What I find, what I like about stories like this is, is, and I'll use Jeff's for an example, or even Annabelle in the Island of the Dolls, it's gotten so commercialized, sometimes it's yeah. it's hard to get the wheat from the chaff there, and you yeah. can't really get in there to figure out what what's really happening. Stories like this make me think sometimes that sometimes there's probably more to those than sure than meets the eye. Sure. Yeah. Kind of like playing the telephone game. Exactly. Yeah. You, don't you know the telephone game? No, I don't know. Oh, come on. Game. Y'all were in the Air Force. You had to have done the telephone game during training in something point in time. No. The guy at the head of the table gets the story, and then you tell it to this guy, and you go all the way around the table. And uh, he gets I know what it is, but no, we didn't do that. Okay. Yeah. I never heard it called the telephone. Yeah, me story. either. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, I, I, I see where you're going. Okay. Yeah, I told you mine wasn't going to be. Oh, well, that's all right. But hey, you know, it's it's it, it was a story that I found that was interesting, and exactly. I, I like how it was all because the the couple had five daughters. Yeah. And everything. Lucky I only had three, but yeah, <laughs> they had the five daughters, and it was the youngest one that was getting into everything. So I don't know if maybe the older girls were picking on this little one, right? But they said that the doll kept moving from spot to spot on the bench, which is, and the kids said we didn't do it. But with five little girls, yeah, it, right. It, I've seen my girls play tricks on one another. And growing up, I wish Destiny was here because I know she would tell about her story. She told about it once. Okay, so another little bit of backstory. My mom and I were crazy obsessed with uh, porcelain dolls for whatever stupid reason. Okay. And um, I don't know if anybody knows the story behind porcelain dolls, but originally they were first made or first documented in China. Okay. And um, what happened was if somebody was possessed or had an evil spirit or anything like that, they would basically make a doll that looked just like them, kind of like a voodoo doll would be made. Right. And they would trap this evil spirit in this doll and bury it because you can't break it, you can't burn it because that releases the spirit back into the world. Okay. So they would bury these dolls. Well, then porcelain dolls started kind of becoming more mainstream. People wanted them. Right. And when this happened... All this crazy stuff started happening to people because I'm guessing, I mean, obviously, I don't think this happened to us, but for some people, they would actually purchase these authentic dolls, not knowing that that's what they were because they wanted them to look older. I did all kinds of research about this. Hey, wow, that's Um, that's awesome. I I was so scared. I wasn't expecting this about the doll story, but all right, go ahead. Yeah, I was scared. So that's a little backstory about porcelain dolls in general. So what happened was I was a kid. I think you were seven... Probably eight, something like that, yeah. Because my sister and I shared a bedroom. Okay. Kristen was still sleeping in y'all's room. Right. So she was yeah. only two. She was two. So yeah. Was... So yeah, I was probably seven or eight years old. We had these bunk beds. Okay. And we had this giant entertainment center. So our bunk beds went head to foot like this against a wall, and then the entertainment center was here. Mm-hmm. And so on top of this entertainment center, I had my favorite little porcelain doll because I was crazy, and um. <laughs> Had a red dress on. I, I remember. No, that. it's a green dress. She had red hair. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, I know. See, I told you you're getting old. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so uh, then the stall one night, I'm sleeping, and um, for some reason I woke up and I didn't know why because I didn't hear anything, and so I roll over in bed and there's my doll, right there in my bed because I I slept on the bottom bed, and I'm like, okay, and it kind of was like what are you doing here? (laughs) Like, shouldn't you be up there in your stand? Like in my head, I didn't question why she was there. I just questioned why she wasn't on her stand. And then she looks at me and she says, can I sleep with you? And I'm thinking in my head, like, well, what, don't you want to stay on your stand? Isn't that where you live? Like in my seven year old brain. And then it registers, aren't your eyes green most of the time? This time her eyes were red. And then about that time, this little girl who was a ghost lived in her house shows up in her antique 19th century white lace gown and looks at me and says, do not let her in your bed. She is not nice. And I said, I don't think you can sleep with me. (laughs) And then then I I don't remember anything after that. Honestly, I think I went to bed and I woke up and she was on the stand and that's it. Now you said your, your sister was in the room too. Stephanie. Yeah. Did, did she ever have any experiences with the doll like you did? Not with the doll. Nobody ever had experiences with the doll except for me. 
Right. And after that, we had our house cl- cleansed. Cleansed. That's okay. when Misty had it cleansed and everything. Okay. And we actually had a medium um, come in. Uh-huh. And without, okay, before we had her come in, Misty had contact her over the phone. Right. And without telling her anything about what had happened or why we were calling her, she asked about the doll. Okay. I need to and, step out for a second. Yeah, go ahead. And, um... Misty asked about it, and well, the medium asked about it, and she was like, "Yeah, we do have a doll in here." And she goes, "Does it have to do around your daughter?" Wow. And Misty was like, "Well, yeah." And so she's like, "Whatever you do, get rid of the doll. I don't know what type of doll it is, but you need to get rid of. I'm picking that up already." And Missy's like, okay, you need to come to the house. If you're picking that up already, you need to come to the house. And so she comes to the house, and then she talked about the little girl that Destiny had witnessed with the white dress and everything. And she wasn't the only one that witnessed this little white girl in the dress because at the time, um, let's see, Misty saw the girl in the white dress. Uh, Misty's mom saw the girl in the white dress and kind of ticked me off because the girl in the white dress didn't show herself to me. Hmm. Uh, she sued herself to uh, Lane as well when he was a little baby. And I got a whole other story for that one after she gets back to tell right. us about that one. Right. But um, this medium came in, and immediately she said, y- you got rid of that doll, didn't you? And then she's like, yeah, we, we got rid of it. She goes, I could tell because it's the presence not there. She had no clue what we had done with it or anything, but wow. she knew that we got rid of it. And uh, she proceeded to tell us that she was trying to get – after destiny and me you know i'm major skeptic right i, I really didn't believe in any of this stuff sure. um sure. i was like yeah okay whatever she had a nightmare she was sleeping i was explaining right. everything logically right. i was explaining sure. it away as we always do exactly which is why i don't deal with porcelain yeah. dolls I remember, I remember yeah I, that mm, story. I don't mm. you know also with five girls and, and we all know um a lot of poltergeist activity could be centered around that exactly. so you get five adolescent yeah. Right. Girls, then maybe there was something going on there too. So. Right. Could be. Yeah. There's, there's a lot to this, but like I said, there's nothing in there about more to it. I just wish I was able to find more information. Yeah. But if any of you listeners out there in Massachusetts know anything about this, please let us know. Oh yeah. And also if you go looking, like Rob said, it's Charlie C H A R L E Y. Yeah. Cause I, I want to know more about it, but is it haunted or is it just a road trip? Well, there you go. Yeah. Yeah, I've always wanted to go up to that part of the country anyways. I want to do a haunted lighthouse tour up there. Yeah, it would be neat. Do you know of one? I want to make one. Oh, you want to make one? I want to find this. I, I, it's like my dream thing is to do the east, the northeast coast, the lighthouse tour. But I want to find all the haunted stories and just do all them. Well, the only lighted house that I know that was haunted was the one that we saw, what, season one? Of, um, what was it? Well, you've got the... Uh, the haunted uh, lighthouse down in St. Augustine. That's Florida. the one. I'm, yeah, that's the yeah. one I'm talking about. That's yeah. the one I like to go see. Just yeah, see if something too. does me look too. over the edge. There's also the one down across the bay there in Galvis from Galveston. Oh man, what is the name of that little town? But anyway, right across the port, supposedly I think it's supposed to have some paranormal activity. Well, maybe we ought to do a road trip down there sometime. Well, Galveston, yeah, I'm down with that one. Already did one for Bigfoot, right? Well, yeah. you guys did two of them, Bigfoot. Yeah, coming yeah. up again. That's right, April 13th. Mm. So, well, hey, if nobody minds, can I jump in and do Robert the doll real quick? <laughs> Alice is like, go right here. She's Alice, quiet. Are you go okay ahead. With me doing... yeah. Go ahead. Alice and the doll. She's like, I'm not Alice talking. And Alice and the doll. There we go. There we go. Okay. Well, I got lucky enough to do have Robert the doll. I think from doing the research, I think Robert the doll is probably one of the most well-known haunted dolls there are out there. So what I want to do is I want to start from the beginning and kind of go through chronological on how Robert the Doll came about and some of the stories on it. But most people don't know that it's the most famous one out there. Correct. Correct. So Robert the Doll was named after Robert Eugene Otto. He received the doll from his grandfather in 1904 who bought it while he was on a trip to Germany. And believe it or not, the doll was manufactured by the famous Steiff Company. They were the 
the founder of the teddy bear. So he wound up, uh, it's not a normal doll that they would have sold, but he wound up getting it and brought it home to his grandson. The doll itself stands approximately 40 inches tall and is stuffed with wood wool known as Eclesser, as I think it's how it's pronounced. So it's like a wooden doll almost? Yeah, okay. yeah. Because yeah. I was wondering what it was made. I'm looking at pictures and I couldn't tell what the face was yeah. made out of. Yeah, so anyways, like I said, the boy became very fond of the doll. In fact, it was he became so fond of it that he gave the doll his first name, Robert. And then he started going by his middle name, Eugene. Eugene Otto. Okay. So uh, as he played with the, with the doll, like I said, he became very fond of it. In fact, he would hear, uh, the family would hear at night, uh, Robert up there talking to the doll. And they'd come up and say, what's going on? And he said, well, I'm just talking to Robert and... Then they'd hear commotions and banging up in the room, and they'd come up, what's going on? It always came back to the boy saying the doll did it. The doll did it. He always pushed the blame on to Robert the doll. Now, I was reading about when they were talking about that. Didn't they say that the parents heard two distinct different exactly. voices? Yes, they did. They most definitely did. Uh, Gene, the boy, dressed the doll up. You'll see if you see pictures of him or... Go to websites, you'll see him in a sailor's outfit. That was one of his outfits that he put on the doll. Like I said, he uh, he really loved this doll. Now, the, the claims of the paranormal with uh, Robert the doll, there's many different stories. One of the stories that I read was there was a, a uh, girl from the Bahamas who worked for the family. They said uh, actually placed a curse on this doll. That was one of the stories that they had. Uh, car accidents were caused by a broken. Bone. Yeah, well, and that, that's 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 later on in right. the, later on. But it says legend speculates voodoo played a part in Robert's formative years, while interviews with those close to the Otto family indicated a great deal of emotional energy was placed upon the doll during Eugene's lifetime. Like I said, when anything went wrong with the boy, they would always blame it on it on Robert saying that Robert did it. One story was as his parents were awoken one night to hear Eugene holding Robert down so that he couldn't move. So as uh, Eugene or Robert Otto grew up, he moved out of the house where his parents lived. The only way I can say it is is he built a shrine to the doll. He Up in his attic, he built furniture in size for the, the doll itself. People that walked by the house said that they would see Robert sitting in a chair in the window. Many people were to have said that they heard giggling in the attic. They heard little voices in the attic. So is this after Eugene? After after Eugene. Because Eugene was an artist. That That was what he did. And he went and studied in New York Okay. and Paris. When he came back, he moved into this home, and him and his wife lived there. And like I said, in the attic, he built oh, so. furniture, chairs, mm. everything. He had this strong attraction. Even He didn't carry it like he did when he was a child out in the right. streets, but he placed it in this attic where the doll would sit. So his childhood home. He, no, he no. moved out of his childhood home and into this his own home. So when he moved out, did he take the doll with him he to did. college? Well, it, it, he stayed there, and then when he moved into the home back back in Key West is when he put the doll upstairs in the attic. Oh, okay. So, like I said, he continued to have this, this bond with uh, the doll. It was uh, in 1974, uh, Eugene died. Right. And it stayed in the house for 20 years. There was a lady, let me get her name. She bought the home. Uh, Myrtle Ruder. Right, exactly. And uh, Myrtle did uh, notice that she heard odd sounds and uh, things in the in the house would be misplaced. She would find that. I heard she that. heard footsteps right. and giggling, too. Yes, exactly. So. Nope, I'm done. That would have been it for me. Sorry. Yeah, well. <laughs> So eventually, Robert the doll was donated to the Fort East 
Martello Museum down in Key West. And you know, the sad thing is, is I live just about uh, an hour uh, from the Keys. And- my whole life, I was uh, raised in Homestead, Florida. Now, I wasn't there when the doll would have been moved to the museum, but it would have been nice to uh, be able to get down there and see that. But anyways, so the doll was placed in this museum. It was placed in a glass case. People would come and visit it. They had lines uh, when they heard about the story and the doll. And some of the reports are people would send letters back to the museum months and even years later saying that they had experiences after they would go to the museum. And what they were doing was is they were taking pictures without the doll's permission. That's so they they yeah. felt that there, there was a curse on them, so they would send the letter back asking Robert for his forgiveness for not asking permission to take the picture. I'm also reading when... When uh, Myrtle Reuter had him, because she had the house for 20 years. Right. And according to what I'm reading, that he would move around the attic by himself on his own, and his expression would change if anyone badmouthed Otto. Right. Yeah, there's there's many stories like that. Even when he was younger, they would say... The, go ahead. The doll's expression would Yeah, change. she's saying the doll's expression would change if anyone badmouth Otto in the doll's presence. So if you were badmouthing the little boy, or not a little boy anymore, but the one that he grew up with, the expression would change on She said after 20 years, that's when she donated him to the museum in 1994. And there's, and there's stories of when Robert was younger living with his parents that the doll would move places as well. Really? So, but uh, like I said, there's Robert the doll is very, very interesting. But, but for me, one of the, the problems that I have is I, I read some of the stories about the experiences that people had at the museum. And, you know, they would, they would their electronics would, would go out. And, you know, being paranormal right. investigators, we've dealt with that before. But the only thing that I don't understand is, is how there's no kind of video evidence or documented evidence right. of this kind of stuff happening. Right. So it, it kind of is like the Charlie doll. It kind mm-hmm. of makes me wonder, is it just a story? You know, is it? I, I don't know. I don't know what to think. What do you guys think? They're putting them on as a tour, a ghost tour. If people are lining up to see them because they're saying visitors flock to the museum just to get a look at this mischief toy. Right. That in itself can start creating a legend to where people's like, ooh, I've seen this, I've seen this. And then they started saying, okay, he even aspired a, uh, a movie about right. it, which is where I'm right. sure you're going to talk about Chucky. Yeah. But Robert the Doll is based on the, that is all, correct. all the Chucky yeah, ones. Yeah, I'll let you. So where does that come into play? Is it they're trying to make Chucky saying that he is based on this doll, but – the stories that we're getting had nothing to do with what Chucky does. Right, exactly. So is it just more propaganda saying, okay, this is a haunted doll, this is what it can do, it, it kills people, it does all that? I mean, because growing up, Chucky, Chucky scared the living yeah. Jesus out of me. Yeah, but I never knew it had to be based on Robert until I started doing some of this research. So is it just a, a Hollywood thing now? Or is it, like you said, is it actually haunted? Yeah, I, I I don't know. I don't know. Mike, what do you think? Well, you know, you said there's no video evidence. There's no this. There's no that. I, I don't know. Has there been? I know that. I Didn't didn't Robert go to Zach's museum there in Las Vegas he, when he it did. opened? Yeah, in 20, I think it was 15 or 16. I was, I was thinking this was the one. I was thinking that there was a story where there is some stuff where it may have been on – I'll have to go back and listen. It may have been on Into the Fray where I was listening. And I think Shannon had a guest on that went there and actually maybe had something. I, I, and I could be telling that yeah. way wrong. I just remember yeah, I that. Don't. But it seems like I did hear some stories where they've caught some more than just a personal experience, maybe not full evidence. But what my my counteraction for that was is you know as well as I do. I mean, I look at like my house, for example. I know that there's stuff going on there and you guys have came mm-hmm. in and y'all yeah. have seen crap in there. You know right. what I mean? Right. You know how that goes is yeah. where I'm going with that. So I think if there is a haunted doll in my personal opinion, from the stuff that I've seen, I think that Robert's the deal. 
personally. And I think it has to do, I don't think it's necessarily, and I get really weird out there. I almost think it's more of a manifestation, not necessarily a possession or something like that. That's where I was going because when you brought up when my story, the five girls and adolescents and poltergeists, because he had such a bond with them, could he imprint or something as well? Because yeah. what what makes a haunted doll when, haunted? When, and when, that's why I said when you talk about the facial expression changing when he would mock. bad mouth. Okay. Yeah. Well, if you, let's say you had maybe the child had some sort of ability, mm-hmm. so maybe that was being imprinted, and that's how it was perceived as it was the doll. So again, maybe there was some sort of manifestation there versus a possession of a doll or something like that. But yeah, to go back, you you'd asked about on the ghost adventure. Yeah, in 2015, he uh, the doll was taken out to uh, Zach's museum out there. We're and, talking about Zach from Ghost. ghost See, I didn't think that okay. museum just yeah. opened till here recently. Yeah, Mystery Mansion. It opened up in uh, 2015. Okay. You know, Robert the doll. Like I said, that's the one that a lot of people know mm-hmm. when you talk about haunted dolls. There's been all kinds of movies made on it. Um, in fact, here recently, I just didn't think about it till not too long ago, but if you've ever watched, uh, Ozzy and Jack's world detour, Ozzy had a, a fear of, of dolls and Jack bought him a replica looking, uh, Robert doll. And he was really, really scared of that doll the whole time on the show. It would wind up showing up in, in different places. But, you know, it makes me wonder, uh, looking back, you know, we started with the, the Island of the Dolls. It's it's a story in and of itself. But you look at Charlie Charlie the uh, doll. The interaction is with kids. You right. Know, it's, of course it's a doll that, that children play with. But you don't hear a lot of interaction with adults. Right. You know, Robert the doll, the same thing. The boy interacted with the doll. You know, you heard the two voices, distinct voices. Here again, it's a child. The story we're about to hear in a few minutes of Annabelle, you know, it's kind of the same thing. So it makes me wonder, why is that? Again, that goes back to my whole manifestation. Yeah. Uh, Maybe uh, almost like a tulpa, maybe, or... Maybe there's something there where the kid thinks so much that it's that, or it's that imaginary friend is so powerful that it's almost being imprinted into that doll. I don't know. I mean, that's really far out there. I know that's really weird. Or is it like we've, you know, we know doing the paranormal, as we say, children are more open. Right. Their minds are very open. We as adults become skeptic and are willing to push everything aside, but a child may not right that, Maybe there's something to that back to my daughter destiny with her doll experience I'm still to this day I'm, that thing was freaking real okay I, yeah. don't, I, don't, I don't as an adult i know that that can't happen but that experience happened in my home and as soon as we got rid of that dang thing it stopped but, you know, real quick before we go on to Allison's, because I don't want to take the time from hers, but, you know, you talked about the island of the dolls and being alone and, and all of that. You know, Robert Eugene Otto, they said, was very eccentric and, and a loner. You know, there again, it makes you wonder if you're with your only real interaction is with a doll, you can all of a sudden believe that that doll but, has its own yeah. personality. And this is where I get weird. Is it, is it you believing that doll or is it you manifesting, manifesting something yeah. into that doll? Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. Don't be looking over there like that, man. Like you're looking behind him or something. Don't, don't be. That was pretty creepy. I just saw something. Don't be. Go behind that sheet. <laughs> no, the heck you didn't. <laughs> okay, okay, so with that said, Robert... <laughs> I just wanted to let you know I I mean no harm in what I said, okay? I don't want to have to write a letter because I uh, said something about you. Was there a new movie that came out about him? There was Robert the Doll, and this is my funniest story ever. I look at this, and all I can think of is Willem Dafoe. If you... Anybody out there <laughs> looks at this doll, that's what I see is Willem Dafoe. It, it cracked me up. Because I was just looking at this, and it said... Um, 
before Chucky, before Annabelle, there was Robert the Doll. He wants to be your friend. And I'm like, I don't remember that movie. The Robert the Doll movie was like 2015. Yeah. yeah 20, I, 2015, and there was a curse in 16, and then a second sequel, The Toy Maker, followed in 2017. I thought there was a Revenge of Robert or something. There is. In 2018, it was released last year, The Revenge. I no, tell you, I tell you what, I would really like to go down and actually see this doll. It'd be kind of cool. And, and for me, it was really interesting to find out that the doll was a, made by the Stife Company. Yeah, the teddy bear ones. That yeah, I mean that's their world renowned. Uh, go ahead. So you were talking about earlier about it being wood. It's it's actually a cloth doll, but it's stuffed with wood. wool. Yeah, wool, wood, wool. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, like yeah. Excelsior or something. That's okay. what Jeff was yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah. It's not a wood doll. It's just stuffed with this wool, fi- like a wood fiber. Oh, gotcha. Okay. I think I told you, too. To me, there's something about Robert that's creepy. Yeah. yeah it, his face to me is very creepy. Yeah, it's not like a typical baby doll or it's not like a toy doll. Right. It's just really weird to me. But, but I tell you what, one of the good shows that I watched... Uh, the Lure, if you ever watch the series The Lure, they have a Robert the Doll story on there. Hmm. So if you ever get a chance to go see it, it's really good. So, well, I appreciate y'all allowing me to talk about Robert the Doll. I really enjoyed it. In fact, I don't like reading, but I actually, I'll give a plug here real quick. I read a book called Robert the Doll, written by David Sloan. That uh, goes into a lot of interesting stories about the doll, the family, there's some stories from people that have, you know, written letters about this yeah, doll, about this doll. Yeah. <laughs> um, and some of the experiences they had down in Key West when they were there. So if you get a chance, take a read on that. As a final note, when you and I were we were messaging one day and you were saying you don't think it's real. Do, do you still stand there or do you do you think, you know, I really I, I still don't know what I feel on it. Um, I. It's really hard to say. I'd like to go down and see the doll, kind of see it in person and see. Get the vibe. Can, can it happen? Oh, yeah, I believe. I truly mm. believe that a an object can be possessed, whatever it might, whatever you might call it. Um, on this one, I just really don't know. I, I would have to see hard evidence, you know, not just people's stories. Kind of like how the next story... Annabelle has exactly. some hard yeah. evidence. Right. Okay. Speaking of. <laughs> Speaking of, like I said before, me and haunted movies or scary movies, I just, I can't handle it. And we're sitting for two and a half hours. I can't do that either. So I was able to do a little research. And as I started doing the research, I realized that I had one of these dolls, which... The Raggedy Ann? The Raggedy mm-hmm. Ann doll. And I never knew, and it's probably a good thing, but I know that my parents <laughs> have it probably in my old uh, toy box, so I will now think and look <laughs> at it differently. Mm-hmm. Just to give you a little history about it, in 1970, there were two girls that lived together. One, her name was Donna, and her roommate was Angie. Angie had a fiancé named Lou. And it was a very small apartment complex that they lived in, which means their room, you know, the the apartment itself was very small. Donna's mom came in with a doll that she picked up from like a thrift store, um, secondhand store. She picked it up for her because she wanted to show the girls that she was very proud of them because they were going to school to be a nurse. And the girls really didn't think of anything of it. You know, they were like, come on, Mom. And actually, I believe she was 28 years old. So I will have to go back and double check on that with the reading that I was doing. So when y'all were talking about how it was happening with kids, I want to say that I read that she was 28 years old. So Donna kept it in her room, kept it on her bed, and... Nothing really happened right at first. She would always make her bed, and she would lay the doll out flat. She would come in after class, and the doll's leg would be crossed, or the hands would be crossed. 
Then it started moving out to the couch, and they were trying to, the girls were trying to figure out, it was it Lou? And Lou came forward and said, I absolutely dislike that doll. I get a bad feeling about it. You really shouldn't have it in the house. It got to the point where they were finding notes that said, help me or help Lou, and it was written on parchment paper. And Donna and Angie didn't have any parchment paper in the house. So they were questioning what was going on. One night, Lou had this really bad dream. He was having dreams, but he wasn't, ta- you know, wasn't telling the girls about the dream until this one. He felt something crawling up his leg. When he opened his eyes, he saw this doll on the che- on his chest and the hands up around its neck like he was that like the doll was going to choke him out. And when he sat up in the bed, he saw the doll sitting over there up against the wall. So he was telling Donna and, and Angie about it, and Donna decided to bring in a medium to kind of figure out what was going on. And the medium told her that, and this is two different stories that I found. One story was the girl used to live on the land before the apartment complex was built. A fire happened in the house, and the, and the child went into the doll because she wanted to live forever. And her name was Annabelle. And the other um, story that I heard was that she was in a car accident, or read, not heard, car accident, and the girl died outside on the road, but still the, the apartment was not there. And was asking the girls if she could stay with them because she felt that the girls would love her and that the girls were trustworthy. So the girls feeling bad about, you know, what happened, they said, sure, you can stay here with us. Thinking, you know, this lady's got to be crazy for saying this and we'll, we'll be okay with it. Well, time was going on and it was getting worse and worse with the activity. So Donna decided to bring in a priest and was informing the priest what was going on. And he automatically turned around and called in Ed and Elaine, Elaine Warren. Lorraine. Lorraine. Lorraine, sorry. Yeah. Listening to their story, and they said that it was probably best that they take Annabelle back with them. And on the way home, they decide, and this is where I'm, I'm confused. Ed decided to take the back road home. He wanted to stay off the interstate because he didn't know what the doll would do or could do. So why would you go on a back road? Because, you know, don't bad things happen on a back road in the movies, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Not saying that I watch scary movies, but... No, they, they do. So the engine was cutting off several times, and the power steering was failing, or was um, it's going out, going out, failing. It kept failing. The power steering kept failing on them. So he decided to keep it at sixty-five miles an hour, and then turned around and threw holy water on the doll to get it to calm down. So they got home. Ed left the doll in his office. The doll. I'm going to call it Annabelle now. I guess I should say instead of the doll. So Annabelle would actually move in Ed's office. And it even levitated a couple of times. And that's when he decided that he was going to build the glass box for it and lock it up so that way it couldn't do any more harm. One report that there's there's no evidence of this, but a guy and a girl, boyfriend and girlfriend, walked into their museum, Ed and Lorraine's museum, and he wanted to see the doll. So Ed took him down there and showed him the doll, and the boyfriend started mocking the doll, you know, kind of trying to get the doll to do something. And Ed told him, hey, you know, knock it off. That's it. You know, you're you're doing what you're doing isn't right, and bad things can happen to you. And the Boyfriend and girlfriend started laughing as they were going out. Well, on their way home, they ended up having a motorcycle accident, and the guy hit the tree head on, which automatically killed him, but the girlfriend survived. But there was no documentation of that, but that was just something that I found as I was reading. And then, of course, going into the movie scene as to where you got to write a really good story, so they're going to add stuff. Mm Mm-hmm to make it a better story because it is Raggedy Ann doll in which they turned it into a porcelain doll and was starting things on fire in the house and trying to throw it in the trash. None of that happened. That was just in the movies. So none of that actually happened. Correct. 
I've never understood, I guess because he has a museum, but I never understood why you take a haunted object that can levitate and come off the ground and put them in a glass box. It just never made sense. Why would you, why would yeah, you put them right. in like a steel box with like some sort of protection on it? <laughs> yeah, something? right. The other thing, I was trying to Google here. I'm going to go ahead and say this because I don't know what I think about Annabelle. The, the whole conjuring, the whole thing about that, I maybe it's because it's a raggedy handoff. I know that it's considered sacrilegious to talk about the Warrens in a negative light, which I think they were still good people. I think they had very good intentions, but I just always felt like this story was maybe embellished a little too much. Uh, I, I don't know. You know, I like Allison was saying about the story of, you know, taking the back roads, but I, I just never understood why, you know, there was a movie about Ed and Lorraine. Right. Yeah. And it was right. really, it really got out there. Yeah. I think it, to me, it did more of a disjustice because then Annabelle, the movie Annabelle, because you knew the movie Annabelle was modified. You know, you knew that it was a Hollywoodized movie. The other movie was, should have been accurate. And I think it wasn't to that degree, but, um, the, I never understood why you know, he goes in and oh, we're going to take the doll with us and we're going to do this. I, unless he just got that bad of a feeling or something that was going on because up until that point, what was the doll doing that was necessarily so bad to yeah, those girls? I'm, I'm wondering as well. I mean, yeah, there were some times that they were like left a part out. Oh, so you know, yes. Then what was it? The part was that Annabelle ended up with what they're calling blood on her hands and two drops on her chest. But if you look at the pictures where the Warrens have right. them, there's, there's no the, blood on the hands. That's and what I was about to no ask because it, the it made a cloth, right? Yes. So, and that's what I'm saying. Even with that, so there's blood, there's stains, there's something that's going on. Did he harm the girls? Did he harm someone the girls knew? Or she, I should say. Annabelle. Yeah, Lou. He was, well. Trying to choke him. Yes. But was it a dream or was it real? Because he did not like Annabelle at all. So Annabelle was always on his mind. Um, and maybe, you know, the girls did it as a joke and put it on his chest to freak him out when he woke up. Yes. I don't know. I just... When, when you say girls, you're talking about adults. Yes. Right. Okay. Yes. Because Annabelle didn't start around children at all. Not... Well, Well, that's I don't what know. she was saying. She thinks you I was trying to look it up. Jeff, have you so, found anything? So no, she, not yet. That's what I'm looking for. No, most because most Raggedy Ann's start off as a doll that is given as a child and then... Because I, like you said, I remember having them. We had Andy, and my mom had the Raggedy Ann and Andy collection. And I mean, even I have a Raggedy Ann and doll collection, Christmas collection. Oh wow! Uh, that's still in the box, both of them. Annabelle never crossed my mind as being like that. But once we started doing the paranormal research, and we found out that Annabelle really was the Raggedy Ann, um, we. We haven't had that out for Christmas at all since the Portland <laughs> doll thing. So, yeah, I mean, but we still have them in the boxes. We never took them out, but it was only for a Christmas decoration because they have the Christmas outfits on. Right. But, well, that, and they're not, Donna and Angie weren't kids because they were nursing students. So, so did they have the Raggedy Ann? And if they were nursing students, was it a way to help yes. children? Here we go. Donna, a nursing student who was turning 28. So if she was a nursing student, did she have the dolls to no. help the children get over, like... No, uh, the, no, Donna's mom bought it from a thrift store just to help decorate the girl's apartment. I'm going to read this, and I don't know how much accuracy there is. So we don't know where the origin came from Correct. then because it was a thrift store Correct. buy. Interesting. The real Annabelle doll was given as a birthday present by a mother to her daughter, Donna, a nursing student who was turning 28. Donna's murder, Martha purchased the antique Raggedy Ann doll from a hobby store in 1970. Where, what, what town or anything like that? Was it, is this, there a certain town or city it was bought in or? The dolls from her own as nursing students, Donna and Angie had never been attacked by members of satanic cult. That part of the movie was pure fiction. Of course, I knew that. But. I never found a town. I just know that it's yeah. now in Connecticut. So all this is starting from when she had it. Correct. Well, no. I mean, it could have happened. That's the reason why the doll ended up in a... A thrift store. Okay, thrift yeah, store. yeah. Someone was like, uh-uh, get rid of it. Like, yeah. we, we got rid of ours. Uh-uh, get rid of it. Mm -hmm. I don't care who has it. It's not my problem anymore. Interesting. I was trying to look here and see if I... Well, it was interesting to, to hear the story of how the doll 
was based upon Annabelle Higgins, the little girl that died at an early age. I think you said seven, right? Yes. Well, there is controversy over that. Ed, Ed Warren had, there was like conflicting reports where one time he said it was six, one time he yes. said it was seven. But who named the doll then? Was it the Warrens that named the doll or? No, the psychic that came in, they did the seance <sighs> with the doll present. When she, the Warrens had him or when? When it was just Donna and Angie. Okay. So it was the the psychic that was doing it was giving the information. Mm-hmm. So that's what Donna and Angie went off of. But that was what her name was. And they brought in the psychic because the doll was doing stuff? Or they yes. found the blood on the doll? And... No. Oh. The blood didn't happen then. The blood happened after. So it, it was just... just the moving around. I saw one part that they would put tape on the door. But when the girls opened, the women, Donna mm-hmm. and Angie, would open the door, well, you would break the tape right so and then they would put furniture in certain places to see if the furniture would move if someone came in on the i just did notice this the one of the stories talks about when lou was being strangled that he was paralyzed when the doll doll attacked him and then the doll kind of crawled up him and strangled him until he passed out and then he woke up the next morning and found it in the girl's room well, he was he was being attacked because he wanted to get rid of the doll right yes and that was saying the notes were saying help Lou, right? And then the other one would you know they would find one that said help me, right? The girls didn't oh, want to. I thought the girls were writing the notes. No, the girls were finding the notes. They were finding the notes that were on parchment paper. <sighs> yeah, which I will say, you know, when you look at classic possession stories and things like when people cough up nails or right, they say the people aren't actually coughing up the nails. It's a manifestation Station. that's happening at that point right. in time. So if it all really was possessed, maybe I don't know what I think about it. Well, well yeah. back, back to the loose story, you know, I was reading something here. It talked about how he woke up one night, felt like he couldn't move and he saw the doll standing there. You know, we've talked before on, I right. think yeah. one of our shows yeah. about sleep paralysis, paralysis. Mm-hmm. you know, it makes you wonder, could he have been experiencing that at that time? I don't know. Now that you've kind of researched and you've done all that, what do you think about Annabelle? Do you believe the hype? Well, I didn't. Well, from what I was reading, that demons can't attach to things, correct? They they attach. I've to always people. wondered. Yeah, I've always wondered why they would attach to an inanimate object if they're fully capable of attaching. Because I hear this all the time about you know a demon possessed a car or a demon possessed a a doll or why Christine. would why does it have to be a demon? Why can't it just be a a spirit? A bad, spirit. Right? See, I would think that that would it's be more likely spirit. than a demon. I'm I'm thinking that if a demon has that much power. Why yeah. would they go for a doll? Exactly. Unless you're trying to instill fear. What what, what would be the purpose of that? Or is it a doorway to possess a human body? Yeah, or maybe they were somehow, sometime there was a protection done and they were cast into that. I, yeah, right. I, I, I have, yeah. I just, I've always found that weird that why would a demon possess a doll? Right, because back to Destinies, I, I don't believe that was a demon at all. Do right. I believe it was a spirit? Yes. Do I believe it something... Evil was trying to get to it. Yes, but demon, no, I don't believe it was a demon at all. Okay, then I would have to say, to answer your question, I would say that, to me, this is a Raggedy Ann doll with two two women that are nursing students that have been up studying. They're running off of lack of sleep, so... And back then, they used the drugs to yes. stay up. And I, to, yeah. me, to me, they're, I can't see a doll being possessed or a spirit in it but hearing your story it changes my mind because uh, i know I, somebody it, yes and like i said if she was if she could have been here she could have told you exactly what happened i'm only given just the basic things that i can recall remember because she was eight or nine years old when this happened and i remember distinctly the next morning her running up and telling us that this happened and misty was like oh heck no uh-uh and that's when she called in the medium from this church and everything to come in. And on the phone, the lady never came to the house. It was just on the phone. And the lady's like, you need to get rid of that doll. And Misty went, what? And she told me the story. And I'm like, okay, let's get rid of the doll. Because at first, yeah, I'm, I was skeptical. that Yeah, okay, that, that really happened. No, that didn't happen. But seeing the doll move from spot to spot, and I know... I know that our girls could not touch this doll because we kept it on a shelf. 
there's no way that she could have got the doll. Even when we brought the doll into our room, I know where I put this doll, and there was no way it could happen again. But as soon as we locked it up, and now that I'm thinking, we put it in a glass container as well. Hmm. I don't know why I just thought about that. Well, we, I put her in a, gla- a glass box container. That's All the haunted dolls that they're talking about have been put in a glass container. I don't know if Annabelle's in there. I, I want to look into that. Yeah, because yeah I do too. I, I, do just, want, I, I want to, when you get through, I want to read something I just saw. It just talks about what we were just right. speaking about. I'll wait till you finish. No, I'm, I'm well. I, well, wait. What What is the other show with the guy, the haunted that takes the haunted items to his place? Oh, he always uh, says haunted it. collector. Haunted yes. collector. Yeah. Does he put it in? I've never seen it. Ever. Everything's into. It's wooden on the bottom, and then he sits that. Maybe you can see it, so you see if it's doing something. I. I yeah, have to, ours was a a wooden bottom with a glass door on the front. You know, Mike, you had asked, though, and, and I don't know why this came to me, but could it be that that doll, somehow that girl did, the spirit of her actually did go into this doll? Could it be possible then this girl somehow, maybe not intentionally, but attracted some kind of demonic entity, sp- entity right. spirit to come into that doll as well because of her? Which one are we talking about? Annabelle? Annabelle, okay. yeah. Yeah, the little seven-year-old. It's oh, based. The seven-year-old. It's, okay. Yeah, it's based on the seven-year-old. Based on what the psychic is right, saying. Right. Right. What he's saying. What if the seven-year-old girl spirit got into the doll somehow, and then some other evil spirit through that little girl entered the doll itself too? Because I wouldn't think that the little seven-year-old girl would want to kill somebody like this Lou character. You know, the doll. I think it would just be you know want to be playful and that kind of stuff. So could have something else attached itself to the doll along with the little spirit of the girl. Let me read this for a second. This might take just a second, but this is going to, this is from the occult museum.com and it talks about the true story of Annabelle. Um, when Lou woke up the next day after blacking out, he heard noises from Donna's room. So he went up there, the room was empty and the doll was like, it was thrown in the corner. Uh, so he began to look for, you know, what was going on. And he thought he heard somebody behind him. So he spun around real quick. Nobody was there, but he instantly doubled over and was bleeding from his chest. There were just seven distinct claw marks, three vertically and four horizontally, and they were all hot like burns. So that's when Donna finally believed that the spirit was not that of a young girl. She contacted a priest who immediately contacted the Warrens. They came to the conclusion that the doll was not possessed, but instead was being manipulated by an inhuman presence using the doll to create the illusion of it being alive. The inhuman presence was not looking to stay attached to the doll. The Warrens told this woman it was instead looking to possess a human host. It first began moving the doll around the apartment by means of teleportation to arouse the occupant's curiosity in hopes that it would give its recognition. By bringing a medium into the apartment to communicate with it, the demonic spirit was then able to communicate and prey on the girl's emotional vulnerabilities by pretending to be a harmless, lost young girl. Hmm. During the seance, it was giving permission from Donna to inhabit the doll because they thought it was the little girl, and then in turn, the apartment and eventually the women. They believed that the next stage of the demonic infestation phenomenon would have been complete human possession. Had they lasted, they believed that it would have uh, completely possessed one of them and then harmed or killed one or all of the occupants in the house. When you were reading it, did you just say that Donna gave her permission for the doll to in Remember Allison was talking about they were they were doing a seance, seance. and they, they they heard that that's when they came up with the name. What was her name? Um Annabelle Annabelle Higgins. 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 Yeah. And then they she said that she was comfortable with them and, she, and so they tricked her, them that's, into saying that, yeah, you could go you can enter that. Okay. Right. So that makes I, a little more sense because knowing yeah. you have to open the door. Right. right. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. All that sort of yeah. stuff. Yeah. But Make, it makes more sense to me in that aspect of things, but when I was talking earlier about how, why would a demon possess right, a right. Well, that makes a little more sense yeah. there. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. I mean, you know, you look at Raggedy Ann and you're like, what? You know, there's no way. That's a sweet little doll or whatever. But why would you pick the creepiest looking thing if you were trying to be comfortable to someone? Yeah. My thought is this, you know, evil spirits, what better way would it be for them to inhabit something such as a, a doll? Right. That children are drawn to, mm-hmm. those spirits can use that doll to manipulate those children 
and get to do what they want to do. Right. You know, instead of, I don't know. I mean, I do believe that an object can have some kind of yes. attachment yes. to it. But dolls are, like I said, children love dolls. They love to play with them. Kids are open in their minds to, you know, not think right. that something isn't real. Right. Which is what so, threw me off about the 28-year-old getting a raggedy end. Yeah. Why? Well, you know, that kind of goes into, you know, we don't ever advise people to play with Ouija boards because right. Ouija board's just a game. But if something was intelligent enough to trick you into thinking that it's nothing, you can open that door. And right. that's what we always say. You, It's no different than us messing with the K2 meter or something like exactly. that. Sure. You right. have to be able to be aware of what's possibly going on. Like yeah. the one entity that followed me home that time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and the one that I think's followed me home, but yeah. anyways, we'll we'll That's, get into yeah. that later. We're still That's working on story. that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> other stories. Yeah. But you know, we it's it's funny we talk about dolls. Do you guys have any idea on how old dolls truly are? I mean, do you know where where the doll started from? Do you? Are you about to tell yes. us? It actually stems from the Egyptians. The first toy that the Egyptians had was a doll. Really? Yep. Yeah. That's what they say. They say it's it goes back to the Egyptians. I never thought that a doll would be going back that far. And they just made a more lifelike or I, yeah, I I guess. I don't know. I'm gonna do some research and I'll bring that up on one of our other shows. I can see on that where though, the dolls because... came from. Little girls, you know, nowadays little girls like to play mommy and have the baby and just, yeah. you know, I could see that. Yeah. I mean, I, I could be an old like that. I mean, I know Native American children. Have yeah, they, they've had dolls. Right. Just because we live in a modern world, I guess, doesn't mean they weren't. Yeah. So. Well, I'll tell you what, I, I'm i glad we did this. At first, they, I was kind of like dolls, I, I was dolls, really? When you guys told me, yeah, we're going to do it on dolls, I was like, Seriously, okay. it was your idea, sure. Jeff. I know, I know it was. I thought, you know, this would be kind of cool because I was watching. I forget what I was watching, but you know, I'm really glad we did it because I learned a lot. You know, about yeah, I had no Annabelle. clue about the Annabelle. I it, knew nothing about that. Robert the doll. I've seen pictures of it, and I watched that show, Lore, but I knew no history of right of that. No history, Charlie. I mean, there's it, many more. There's many. Out yeah, there's there. like Mandy, Mandy the and, crying doll and right. everything, and uh, Harold the the haunted doll. And right. There, there's so many dolls out there. It's just we could go on and on yeah. about different haunted dolls. Yeah, they're just I, I see them nothing more as vessels. Right. Exactly. You know, for a, a spirit to enter. I mean, I think a spirit could enter pretty much anything that it wanted to. Yeah, attach it to a, an object. But it's interesting to hear the stories of the different dolls and the different stories. Listening to the stories, I, I now think that the reason that things could attach to the dolls is because younger children, that's like their imaginary friend. Right. So, right. And once again, children are open they have the open mind, so why couldn't a spirit or entity try and inhabit the doll to try and have more interaction? Because that's all a, a yeah, mischief were, spirit is, is wanting that interaction. If you were talking to a voice in the middle of the room, and that might be scary to a child, but if a doll was talking to you, like, hey, I'm your buddy. Right. I'm your right. friend. Exactly. So maybe it's a little more. Right. Do they have, but do they have ulterior motives? Right. As to why. Exactly. So just Which, like the case with Annabelle. Right. Um, you know, if that's true, then that's obviously what was going or on. Or the case with the porcelain doll with mm -hmm. Destiny. It, it had an ulterior motive. Otherwise, she wouldn't have told us that this other entity right. got in bed with her and said, don't go. Right. Wow. So how long we've been talking, Mike? Uh, a couple hours. Wow. Well, yeah. <laughs> Actually, I'm, I'm, I'm really on... curious to see what happens 50 years from now with these dolls nowadays that pee and poop and... You're going to have oh. a real-life Chucky. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I think I've talked about this before, but I want to bring this story up again about a doll. What kind of got me into the paranormal was I had an incident in a house I was living in in Utah where... I had a Tickle Me Elmo doll. Well, we all know they're run off of batteries mm -hmm, and everything mm -hmm. else. This doll went off on its own in my daughter's room. Could have that doll, could have there been something attached to that doll that caused it to come on? I truly don't know. I really don't know. Doing research at the home that I lived in, on base, in Utah, there was an actually, there was a child that died in the home that I was living in. So could have it been that child? I don't know. Well, you know what I think of? 
maybe something in like that case, maybe they weren't trying to possess that object, but maybe that's familiar. They were trying to play with it and then them trying to manipulate that object, turned it on and made it go off. Well, but I think for me, I think it was somebody trying to let me know they were there because I had never had any other experience in that home until that incident. And I told, I told you guys that before the tickle me Elmo, like five minutes in my son's room, I had one of those Star Wars banks with Darth Vader on it. You mm-hmm. have to put money into it to get it to go off. Well, it had gone off with mm. no money being put into it. Now, like I said, I understand things run off batteries. Batteries can go out and, and cause things to do that. But it just seems weird that both the bank and the Tickle Me Elmo doll. So I think something was trying to tell me, hey, I'm here. Well, yeah, and you remember but, when we did the church? And I was just about to bring that up. Yes, I was just about to bring that up. Yeah, we had multiple items in there that. Yeah, and that was on audio. Yeah, yeah, right. and we we didn't hear it at first, and it wasn't until we listened to the audio, and then when we had the reveal, they were like, "We know yeah, exactly, exactly what that yeah, is." Yeah, we, we'll have to see if we can't find that. Maybe we can if we can find it out. We had a hard drive failure, but. If that wasn't on, if we've got that, it would be nice to throw in here. Just to, yeah, yeah, that little, would be. I'd, I'll, I'll see if I can't find that. A little play. Well, I will say I'd, I'd be interested to hear some of our viewer stories if they have stories of yeah, definitely. particular dolls or objects or something they may have had experiences with. Right, if they have their own personal doll or right. item or toy or something. That, right. Yeah, let us know. We can do a, a, a Skype with you and let you tell your own story. Yeah, there you go. That'd be good. Listener story. I'd like that. I will tell you, though, after this show tonight, I'm going to go home and take all my grandson's toys. <laughs> all righty, then. Well, does anybody else have anything to add? No, nope, it was very educational. Yeah, yeah I thought it wasn't going to be as long as it was. But me too. I, I actually quite enjoyed this one. Yeah, me too. Good stuff. Can't wait for the next show. And it's going to be on? I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. We'll have to think about that one. I brought this one up, so it's on y'all now. I wonder if there's maybe not dolls, but like like Christine. I wonder if there's like really stuff like that out the car. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. I know yeah. what you're talking about. Yeah. Other objects. Right. Yeah, yeah, like cars or airplanes or. Oh, I can tell you a story about a car with that was almost like Christine that I had. Well, how about that? All right, let's do no. a car, or a, a, some sort of animate object besides dolls that have a history of haunts. I guess. All right. Well, we'll, we'll look stories. into that and see. So now we have a teaser for the next one with your story. All right. Sounds great. I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for listening. Remember that you can always find us on our website at www.militaryparanormal.com or on our Facebook page. The pod bean as well. YouTube channel and Twitter. And if you have any questions, shoot us an email at contact.us at militaryparanormal.com. You can also find us on any of the messengers on those particular items. Again, thanks for listening. We hope that you come back and join us next time, and we'll see you then. See you later. Bye. See you later. Thank you for listening to the MPI Paranormal Podcast. This podcast has been brought to you by Military Paranormal Investigations. Hope you all enjoyed the show. Don't forget to connect with us on Podbean, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Until next time. The truth is to be found.